Are you interested in investing in real estate but don't know where to start? Are you interested in leveling up your real estate investing game? Welcome to the Level Up REI podcast, the ultimate real estate investing podcast that is created by your host, Lisa Hilton, to take your real estate investing to the next level. Join Lisa Hilton on her amazing podcast episodes that will provide you with education, inspiration, and opportunities to enable you to level up your real estate investing game. Welcome, everyone, to the Level Up REI podcast. This is your host, Lisa Hilton, and I am excited you are listening today because this episode is a part of my series on exploring the impact mindset has on you achieving your goals, be it real estate, career, business, but most importantly, your ability to create the life that you truly want. So on today's episode, I am honored to have Trevor McGregor. And Trevor is a high-performance master coach with over 25,000 hours of coaching experience under his belt. He has worked with clients from around the world, including Fortune 500 executives, high-level real estate investors, entrepreneurs, world-class athletes, and business professionals, and they all come to him for one reason, life-changing transformation. So in addition to running his own private coaching practice, Trevor was a master platinum coach with the Tony Robbins group, offering elite coaching unlike any other program in the world. Um, And in addition, Trevor is also an active real estate investor, holding assets in his portfolio that range from single family homes to multifamily apartment buildings, self-storage, agricultural hemp farm, and others. So definitely his mission, mission is to assist others in realizing their true power and hidden potential to achieve more success, wealth, freedom, and contribution than they ever thought possible. I am so excited to have you on the show. Welcome to the show, Trevor. Oh, Lisa, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. <laughs> so I, to get started, we're definitely going to get into mindset, as I stated before. That's a series for this month. But um, can you share a little bit about how you got started investing in real estate? Yeah, it's a unique story. I mean, I am uh, born and raised in Canada. I'm in Vancouver, British Columbia. You know, and like a typical person, you go to school, you go to college. I studied business. And then I went to work in the hospitality business and I ended up, you know, moving my way up through the corporate office and became the executive director of operations. And I really enjoyed it because it had a lot to do with people. And in around 1999, so I know that goes back a few years now, (laughs) the owners of the company were really impressed with my work and they said, Trevor, we're going to expand. Do you want to be part of our expansion and put some money into it? And I thought, wow, this is my big chance you know, and I literally cashed in my 401k. I, you know, took all of my savings. Lisa, I even convinced my very own parents <laughs> to take out a six figure second mortgage on the family home. And we plugged all of that money into this big expansion. We were expanding in five major cities. And for the first year and a half, it went really, really well. Mm-hmm. And then right around 2001, right around the time the planes hit the towers in New York, mm-hmm. you know, we were expanding so fast, the whole economy stopped, people didn't know, you know, which way was up. Right. And to make a really long story short, I lost all of that money that I put into that expansion, all of it. And so there I was broke, you know, that caused, you know, strain on my marriage that caused a strain on my health and I gained a bunch of weight. And I don't know if you or anyone you know that's listening has ever been broke, fat and lonely, but there Mm -hmm. I was, you know, in my early thirties and I thought, wow, this is not good. Mm -hmm. And so what do you do when you're down and out? Well, thank God for me, I found a coach and a mentor. And he said to me, Trevor, what's happened to you is unfortunate, but you got to get up. You got to dust yourself off and you got to keep on moving. And I said, I know, but how? And he said one thing to me, Lisa, that changed my life forever. Mm -hmm. He said, have you ever thought about investing in real estate? Hmm. And I said, real estate? I don't know anything about real estate. and I sure don't have any money. And he said, well, Trevor, you can use other people's money, Mm -hmm. buy a place, fix it up, and either rent it out, you know, and refi it or sell it and just keep that going. And so, again, to make a long story short, I knew that he was a really smart guy and I knew that he was probably, you know, 
my, my one guy that believed in me and he had this recipe roadmap or blueprint, you know, for real estate. So I followed him and I bought one little townhouse and that was a great experience. So I refied that and bought a condo and that was a good experience. And Vancouver was going through a big appreciation. And then Lisa, I bought my first duplex and that's when I discovered what cash flow really was. And I refied that and bought another duplex and another one. And then I bought a fourplex and then I kept buying a bunch of those. And literally in just two and a half years, not only did I pay off all of my failed loans, but I had a beautiful cash flowing portfolio on the top of it. And wow. that's when people started to come to me saying, oh my God, Trevor, how did you do it? And it was my son's baseball coach, my other son's soccer coach, somebody at the swimming pool. And they just kept asking me for advice. And as I started to share my, my methodology, yeah. right, that I got from my coach, I found myself soon coaching other people. And I think that's when the coaching bug bit. Mm -hmm. And I decided to leave the corporate world. And I became a full-time real estate coach and a business coach. And now I run my own company, Trevor McGregor International on that. Wow, that's just an amazing story. <laughs> um, you know, so I, said, I feel like backtracking a little bit, right, through all of this, uh, I feel that mindset had a big role to play in terms of like believing in yourself to do all these different things. And then taking that leap from in the corporate job that you were in to then ultimately going on your own and opening up your own successful, now successful coaching practice. Can you talk a little bit about the mindset behind all of that, uh, that experience for you? Absolutely, Lisa, because again, it, I make it sound easy, but it wasn't that easy because the mind is a finicky thing. And I thought, well, gosh, first of all, I have no money, right? Nobody's going to want to lend me money to buy the first thing. So I had to get past that. Then I thought, wow, I'm already in my mid thirties. I'm getting too old. Maybe I should just stay safe in corporate, right? Then I had to start thinking about, you know, what if I lose the money? What if it doesn't go well? What if my coach, you know, is maybe thinking of a, a different time where it was easier to get into real estate? And mm -hmm. so I think when it comes to mindset, we're always either focused on what we don't want, or you've got to pivot and start focusing on what you do want. And thank God, because I was meeting with my coach regularly and I started to really read the books. I started mm -hmm. to listen to, you know, CDs and audios. I started to go to personal development events. I soon learned that if I focused on what I didn't want, I was going to attract that. Mm -hmm. And if I started to focus on what I did want, I would move towards that. And so I think for you and your listeners, you really got to start with the very first question, which is, are you focused on what you don't want? Or are you focusing on what you do want? Does that make sense? Yes, 100%. Um, and then I guess then connecting that to, you know, 2020 has been a crazy year for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, being able to focus on what you do want versus what you don't want in the face of so much uncertainty and yes. life coming at you in ways that you just did not expect. Um, as a coach to clients, like what are some of the things that you've sort of strategies that maybe you've shared with clients to help them during this, this period, especially starting a new year, 2021? What a great question. And again, yeah, this is my life's work. And obviously working with Tony Robbins for as long as I did. I mean, once I started to build my real estate empire, I started to coach people. You know, I was working with my own Tony Robbins coach at the time. And he said, Trevor, you know, you're so passionate about business. You're so passionate about people. You're so passionate about real estate. Why don't you come in and support the Tony Robbins mission? And that's exactly what I did. And so really, as I started to learn more about focus, right, I started to also learn more about identity. So let's come back to COVID in 2020, because people will either see themselves as a victim to COVID and all of this craziness mm -hmm. and literally stay in their lower vibration and their lower self, or they will transition to, you know, that this too shall pass, mm -hmm. right? And that of all, all chaos comes order. Out of all chaos comes order. And we know that tough times don't last, but tough people do. So to the listener who's out there, who's having a tough time, maybe they've lost their job. Maybe they've been furloughed. Maybe they've had to take a pay cut. Maybe they're dealing with homeschooling their children right. or aging parents. 
I don't know of anyone that has a straight line to success, but I'm telling you here that, you know, success leaves clues. And if you really identify what your focus is and you're able to step into your higher identity, knowing Mm -hmm. that we've all faced adversity before, this has just been one crazy year Mm -hmm. back to back to back. I mean, it started with global warming and then it went COVID. We've had this crazy election you know, um, so again, it hasn't been an easy year for anybody. But again, I really do believe that where you're focused on your state management, being your focus, and you're focused on your story, being your identity, you can then move to what we call the third S, and that is your strategy. Because I'm telling you, there are the wrong things to do, and there are the right things to do to condition the mind for success. What books are you reading? What great podcasts like Lisa's are you listening to, right? right? Are there any virtual events that you can attend? Is there any type of virtual meetup? You know, whether you're an accountant or a doctor or a lawyer or a business professional, I guarantee that there are different, you know, communities out there that you can tap into because you tend to become who you hang out with. Yeah. But you got to align your state. That's your state management focus. Your story, that is your identity. And then the third S is your strategy. That's what you're doing to go out there and literally win the game of life. Does that make sense? That makes total sense. That makes total sense. Um, And then sort of connected to that, you know, you talked a lot of, you've touched on a bit about coaching um, a bit in this, in our, you know, episode so far. Can you talk a little bit about how coaching has impacted you in your life and how you've seen it impacting other people as well? Well, Lisa, that's a great question. And I got to take you back to my own story that, hey, when I was down and out and I was literally not in a good place with my mindset, it was a coach that picked me up, dusted me off and said, Trevor, there's a new way of thinking and a new way of behaving, right, that you absolutely are able to do. And so really a coach is there to really give you inspiration. A coach is there to give you strategy. A coach is there to clear out the cobwebs to any limiting beliefs you've got. A coach is really there as a sounding board. And also a coach can see things that you cannot see yourself. Mm -hmm. It's like that old saying, you know, the inside of the jar can't read the outside of the label. So I think for anybody that is defiantly committed to living their best life, they need either a coach, a teacher, a mentor, a trainer, a facilitator, an accountability partner, or somebody to help them co-create possibility. What do you think of that, Lisa? Yes, 100%. Um, I know that personally, you know, during this time, I've had so many accountability, like I'm a part of accountability groups, um, and also found additional support and coaching during this time. uh, Because even though, as I sort of shared with you at the beginning of our call before we started doing this podcast, you know, even though for me, and I, I feel like some of my listeners can relate to this, is that We haven't necessarily been financially impacted by the impacts of COVID, but it doesn't mean that you're not emotionally and socially impacted by the changes that COVID um, has caused in your culture, in your environment, in your cities. Um, And I feel that to some extent when, to some extent, like it's underplayed how the closure of these places that you can go to you know, find community and be amongst other people, be it dance or yoga or all these different things that we were doing before, like the fact that they're no longer available for us, you know, it does leave a space that requires filling and like just being there to to sit with that and to be aware of that and like to find other avenues and ways that you can surround yourself with, you know, good and healthy um, community despite this and while also being safe at this time. Oh, well, you're spot on with that. I mean, if you really think about it, you know, we've had a pretty good run. The last major hiccup we've had in society was maybe the global financial crisis of 2008, 2009. So if you really think about it for the last decade, Lisa, yeah, people have been able to go out there and, you know, go to gyms, go to yoga, go to restaurants, go to the swimming pool, we've had literally a decade of freedom to go out there and be, do and have anything we want. And so what I find with mindset is it's even tougher 
to navigate change like this when things start getting shut down, yeah. when you can't go to your favorite, you know, restaurant, when you can't go see your parents or your friends. And so I find a lot of people get into a little bit of depression. A lot of people get into a little bit of disillusion and a lot of people, you know, start thinking that this is as good as it's ever going to be. Right. Well, that's where a coach again, or somebody that has been through different market cycles or different things in life, because everybody has ups and downs. You really have to start, you know, remembering that again, you know, life is either happening to you right. or life is happening for you. And for a lot of people that might be listening that think that COVID has happened to them, I want them to look through a different lens just for a minute. What if this was all happening for us? What if, what if this allowed us to slow down for a minute? What if this allowed us to reconnect with our significant other or our kids or, you know, really stop saying that crazy line of, I'm too busy, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. Well, nobody I know right now is too busy to really take a look at what I call your values hierarchy. That is, what are the most important things in your life? Is it your body? Is it money? Is it your relationships? Is it charity and tithing, right? Is it your children? Are you reconnecting with your parents and speaking to them through, through Zoom or Skype? Because again, I can tell where people's mindsets are by what they value in their life. Mm -hmm. And so while I miss going out to restaurants and I miss going to the gym and I miss a lot of those things, it has given me a unique perspective to reconnect with, you know, old friends and people I've worked with and, right. and clients and that sort of thing. Does that resonate with you? That totally resonates with me. <laughs> totally, totally. Because what's left is like really all the things that really matter, you know, and yeah, I think that it's definitely slowing down gives you the ability to really take stock of like what's truly important. It's almost like a clearing. It is. Um, and it's, it's definitely a challenging time, but it's also a very beautiful time of growth and like new beginnings because people can start to be like, okay, well, you know what? If you're into intentionality, you can yeah. come from a place of intention about what it is that you want to create um, as you start your 2021. <laughs> it really is. And I'll stack on what you said because you're spot on. You know, for some people, they feel like this is the end right? But for other people, they think that this is the beginning, a beginning of a new chapter that we get yeah. to go out there and write. And, you know, I know that 2021 is going to look radically different than 2020. Because again, we're different, we're going to come out of it, we're going to want to go travel, we're going to want to go out and be with our loved ones and our friends, we're going to really want to get out there and live our best life. And sometimes, you know, we're reminded of that through tough times or through right. times that, you know, don't meet your expectation. But I really, really, really invite the listeners to really understand that in my reality, every problem is mm -hmm. a problem of perspective. And boy, has COVID given us mm -hmm. the opportunity to have perspective. Yes. Awesome. 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 So last question before we head into my level up questions is, you know, any advice that you'd have, you know, as 2021 starts, and many of the listeners on this podcast are people who are interested in investing in real estate. And they're probably thinking, wow, you know, like how does this real estate, you know, ties in with mindset and mindset and real estate? Perhaps can you share a little bit on your thoughts on like the intersection of real estate investing and like mindset? Yeah, I love the question. And I think that the, uh, the thought there would be that you're either you know, in the game or you're on the sidelines watching the game. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people, they think right now that, you know what, nobody's doing deals or that all the good deals are gone or that it's way more competitive than it's ever been. Or what if I lose money? So again, that focus is all about what is not working. Mm -hmm. When guys like me and a lot of my clients are out there, we're doing deals right now. We're raising capital right now. Mm -hmm. We're finding people that have literally you know, held on to property for 5, 10, 15, 20 years that have already made some good money that want to take some money off the table. So they're selling. So again, I'm telling you 2021 is going to be a magical year for anybody that is in the game instead of sitting on the sidelines waiting for stuff to happen. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so then that takes me now to my level up questions. Um, the first one is, what are you grateful for in your life right now? 
Oh my gosh. Well, I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my wife. Her name is Lisa. She's amazing. (laughs) I'm grateful for my three beautiful boys, Matthew, Mitchell, and Maxwell. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my tenants. I'm grateful for my clients. I really do live with what I call an attitude of gratitude because what's wrong is always available, but Mm -hmm. so is what's right. So let's focus on what's right and let's invite more gratitude into our lives. Nice, nice. And then what has attributed to your success and continuous growth? My success is absolutely directly proportionate, you know, to the mindset work that I do. Because Mm -hmm. again, I get up at 444 every single morning, every morning, even weekends and holidays where I'm reading great books, I'm watching great audio clips, and I'm literally attending virtual events because I really believe, Lisa, that there's always another level. I mean, if the listener is really good at mindset, what's preventing them from going to great? Or if you're already great, what's preventing you from going to outstanding? Or maybe you're already really good with mindset and you're outstanding, but what if I told you there's another level that I call extraordinary or extraordinary? And I'm telling you, mindset work never stops. It's a daily practice. There's always something new to learn. And even after doing 25,000 coaching calls, Mm -hmm. that's an actual statistic with people all over this planet, I'm learning and growing every day. Wow, that's amazing. That's like a true testament that, you know, there's no finish line here. It's a journey. And to embrace that journey and to continue to keep growing and being the best you can be. Um, And then lastly, what do you now know that you wish you knew at the beginning of your journey? Well, it's kind of going to sound very similar, but I didn't know that this three pound mass between our our ears called our brain was so tricky, right? It's really there to focus on keeping you safe, keeping you alive. It's there to focus on, you know, survival, right? But when you tap into doing mindset work, you also realize that this beautiful three pound mass between your ears is here to help you be creative. Mm -hmm. It's here to help you problem solve. It's here to help stretch you and get you to think bigger. I mean, I believe that the number one law of the universe Mm -hmm. is expansion, right? And I just want to use my brain to keep creating things and expand my health, my wealth, my travel, my experiences, and all of those things because I truly believe in, you know, working towards what I call the five freedoms. And the five freedoms is where I use my brain to keep growing and keep contributing, right? But really work towards number one, financial freedom. Mm -hmm. I mean, for anybody that's defiantly committed to it, you can achieve financial freedom. Number two is time freedom, right? Once you achieve financial freedom, you actually are able to do more with your time. Yeah. Number three is what I call geographical freedom. Yes. (laughs) Now we can get on airplanes and literally go see other parts of this beautiful blue planet, right? right? Number four is what I call freedom to go impact humanity. That is, once you've got your financial freedom, your time freedom, and you can travel anywhere, now you get to work on your impact projects or literally find a way to give back. Right. And then number five is my favorite. It's called freedom of relationships. That is mm. not from relationships, but of relationships where we get to go hang out with really cool people that we like to hang out with that elevate our emotions and take right. us to the next level. So financial freedom, time freedom, geographical freedom, impact freedom, and relationship freedom can be yours if you do mindset work. Awesome. 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 So good. Thank you so much for coming on. Like if my listeners want to learn more about you and to learn more about your work, where can they go to find more? Yeah, it's really simple. Just head over to my website. That is trevormcgregor.com. T-R-E-V-O-R-M-C-G-R-E-G-O-R, trevormcgregor.com. You can find out a little bit more about who I am and what I do. And there's a uh, contact uh, opportunity there as well. But I truly appreciate coming on your show. Awesome. Thank you so much, Trevor. You bet. Have a great day. You too. All right. So end of podcast. So that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really, 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 really appreciate it. This is so yeah. good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, your listeners will get a few golden nuggets out of that. And I appreciate you uh, working through the technical challenge. And, yes. um, you know, again, have a happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, Lisa. All right. Take, take care. care. All Bye-bye of now. us. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
Thank you again, Trevor, for coming on the show. I really, really appreciate it. Guys, what an amazing episode. Two really golden nuggets that I took from this episode, and there were so many. Um, but the first one was the three S's that he talked about state management. Um, secondly, your story, your identity, like what you think about yourself. And then number three is your strategy. So what are you, like the books, the podcast, the people that you're spending time around, all that stuff helps you in terms of, you know, priming and keeping your mindset in a place where you can continue to be creative and um, go after and see the opportunities that are in your life. And then the last was his five freedoms. Um, number one was the financial freedom. And then number two was time freedom. Number three, geographical freedom. Like, oh my goodness, I love all these freedoms. <laughs> um, four was freedom to impact humanity. Like contribution is such a huge part of being a human um, and being able to add value to the lives of other people is just, it's a feeling that is, yeah, like it's just an amazing feeling. Um, and then lastly is the freedom of relationships, you know, being able to spend time with the people that you love um, and, you know, be it when they're sick or when they're healthy, like being able to just be, a, you know, cultivate and nurture relationships that matter to you and that are important to you. Um, I really, really hope that you enjoyed this episode. You know, as I said before, um, the this entire series for this month of January is going to be on mindset and the impact it has on you, like living the best life that you need to live and that you want to live. Um, and for 20 and 21, this is my gift to you, which is birth out of my own personal pain of, you know, 2020, as I said on this podcast, while 2020 has not been a financial distressing year for me. It has definitely been a year that has been that has impacted me emotionally and socially, um, in terms of all the different, you know, social activities I was a part of that no longer, you know, operates the way it does because of COVID. Um, but you know, finding new avenues and being able to take the lessons that I learned during those painful times um, to then come and to to be able to share and bring to you amazing people who hopefully can come into your life and come into your mindset and to come into the way in which you're doing things and to be able to, you know, positively impact your 2021. So thank you guys. As always, you can definitely, you know, if you want to learn more content from me, you can go to my website, which is lisahilton.com. Um, there's tons more podcasts. There's also lots of blog posts on there, um, all about um, passively investing in real estate. Um, and if you want to check out my passive real estate, passively, passive investing made easy, um, email series, seven day email series, you know, if you're interested in passively investing in real estate, and you're just curious about how the process all works, then yeah, head to my website, drop in your email, um, and it will come out that you'll get seven days of amazing content um, that gives you a high level overview of what it's like to be a passive investor, what the process is all about, why I like investing in apartments, um, and why I like investing in real estate in general. So definitely hope that that adds a lot of value to you. And until next time, keep leveling up. Bye. That has been another episode of the Level Up REI podcast. I hope this episode has provided you with knowledge, insights, inspiration, and opportunities to level up your real estate investing and other areas of your life. We'd love to hear from you. So if you have any thoughts, comments, or suggestions for topics to cover, feel free to visit our website, www.lisahilton.com. And while you are there, check out our blogs and newsletters. Remember, your level of success will rarely exceed your level of personal development because success is something you attract by the person you become.